Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Andrew Harrison and today's video we're just going to look at the what I'm calling the evolution of tree climbing hitches or tree climbing systems with the moving rope systems. This is a three strand polyester rope with a single bowline and a Blake's hitch with a backup stopper knot. This is a closed system because it's all one loop there's no opening and closing it without untying the entire loop or at least the friction hitch. So we climbed on this for quite a few years. I started in 1994 so I've been tree climbing for 30 years. There was already available to us the next step up. We would use a single bowline with a backup. With the bowline we would have a three strand spliced looped prusik. So this would go on and would usually just use a double wrap commonly called the English prusik. and I climbed on this for quite a few years. That worked quite well and the big advantage here was you could unclip the bowline end and then re-crotch or uh, stage your way up. You could climb on both ends of the rope with two prusiks that was a common climbing method. So we would still climb on a single bowline for quite a while, but um, I'm going to do a double bowline because I really don't want to be demonstrating unsafe techniques at this stage. So double bowline just with the tail tucked out the back. If that looks to you like a Yosemite bowline, then uh, have a look at my other video comparing the double bowline with the Yosemite and uh, I think I explained quite well there the differences and how the double bowline is a superior knot. So we were using 12 and a half mil ropes back then and then we would use a split tail and most commonly a Blake's hitch. Pretty easy to tie, uh, four wraps up, down over the bridge and then around the front and then we would have a tail there with a stopper knot in that tail. But that's actually quite a nice climbing system, easily used. We would have our knot here and just a no splice there. So, you know, all of the ones that I had back in the day, they've all been thrown out. So the next thing that we did was we added a micro pulley, often back to a Prusik loop. The loop goes on the carabiner, usually on the right, not on the left. And then the micro pulley goes over the running part of the rope on the same side as the hitch. But of course, as you could see there, the micro pulley can tend the slack, which is actually a really useful uh, addition to the climbing system and of course you can climb over a branch like so and descend and the rope runs over the branch and is uh, redirected into the hitch via the micro pulley. So micro pulleys really revolutionized the way we climbed, the way you could move around in the tree without having to constantly retrace your rope. So this micro pulley works with Prusik, Blake's hitch, it also works with a taut line hitch. The other additional thing that we changed was instead of having an open loop here, if we changed to a scaffold knot or often sometimes called a fisherman's noose. So that's a simple knot to tie, which I'm pretty sure I've demonstrated that in another video. But the great thing about the scaffold knot is that it girths up tight and sits on that carabiner nicely. So then that doesn't move around on the carabiner. That's a great addition to a climbing system if you've never done that before. We got rid of this floating pulley system because uh, uh, oh, it's kind of nice. It actually works quite well. It's actually sometimes quite good in a rescue situation if you've got a rope bag on your back and the rope feeds out because this micro pulley floats really well. What we kind of went to was a fix type pulley and a piece of rope 
tethered to that, that's again a scaffold knot and a open uh, a fisherman's noose on the other end, scaffold knot. Using this one you could tie a multiple different kinds of hitches and it was all one piece pretty much. So you know I would carry this around with these three components all together like that. So you can't really lose them. Um, easy to tie up in the tree because uh, you're not going to drop it. This actually demonstrates quite well why this system really didn't persevere for too many years. Common practice in the early 2000s and as you can see because we've got knot, pulley and then knot with the large diameter rope all on one carabiner the load on this carabiner, half of it is way out here and the rest of it spread over this edges here so carabiners aren't designed to be loaded like this. Uh, the Tree Imagineers guys, they came up with the hitch climber setup which really revolutionised the way that we set up friction hitches. Uh, great innovation and it got away from this kind of setup. So I don't recommend this kind of setup anymore, but like I said, this is the kind of the history or evolution of friction hitches. So VT. Then what we went to next was, like I said, the uh, hitch climber setup. So we'll look at that now. We've got four components. We've got, we need a friction hitch, we have the pulley itself, and then we have two carabiners that go into the system. I'm going to set this up with the Swabish or the modified Prusik uh, in the first instance. Uh, this is a really good knot, uh, especially if you are not super confident yet because it's um, always going to uh, hold. Very rarely will it slip accidentally. So if you're trying an advanced friction hitch and it's slipping, then I suggest go back to the uh, the Swabish and the, the likelihood of it slipping is far less likely. Uh, I will show you the distill and the VST again. The micro pulley goes on and then we put one leg of the hitch on one side, then the carabiner, the lower carabiner goes through the, the lowest hole, the three holes remember, and then rotate that all the way around. Um, having a rubber grommet on here is highly recommended. Uh, I might just grab that in a second. And then on your splice, it's better to put the carabiner on the pulley first, and then the carabiner goes through the splice. Now you can see the great thing with this now is that all of the carabiners are lined up nicely so that the load is transferred through the major axis of the carabiners so there's no spreading the load. So nice rubber grommet that actually holds things from slipping around. This makes it easy to get on and off for your harness so that's really nice and the top one here so once it's set up easy to take this off to recrotch or uh, change your time point. One really important thing is this system needs to be used with a splice on your termination end. If your rope doesn't have a splice you can't tie a scaffold knot like we had in the system before. This is really important. The problem here is that you've got a really bulky knot that can interfere with your friction hitch. So if you bring this down and then they overlap, then potentially this friction, sorry, the friction hitch here can be pulled down by the knot. So, I mean, I don't know if it's likely to happen, but there is a risk there, which is known, so we shouldn't be doing it. There is a way to uh, minimize that risk, and that's simply if you don't have a splice or your splice is damaged for, what, for whatever reason you just could tie a double bow line but just make it relatively large so 
double bowline, get rid of the tail, tuck that up the back. So this knot is above the friction hitch. So that's really important. If you must uh, use a knot here, the knot must be above the friction hitch so that it can't interfere because that can only go down. This can't go any higher than that. They can't interfere with each other. Hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, please subscribe. If you've got any questions, please ask in the comments below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. So let's look at a couple of other friction hitches without even the gadget tree. So like I said before, that was the Swabish modified Prusik. And the simplest adaptation from this one is actually the distal, which is basically just that bottom wrap going around and then they come out opposite sides. Now I have used this one a little bit. It does slip a little bit more than the Swabish. I find it harder to set sometimes. So I've found that lighter weight people tend to be able to use this one quite well. But myself, I'm 75 to 80 kgs. It doesn't work very well for me. People 70 kgs and lighter, it seems to work well. Whatever hitch you are using, just experiment and make sure that you try it out on the ground so that it works really well before you climb up the tree, obviously, because you don't want it slipping up the tree. Especially when the hitch is new and the rope is new. And if they're both new, then even extra caution, doubly, doubly, doubly. All right, so next one, uh, and I'll just do the VT. This is a bit easier with this length of rope. So four wraps up in this case, crossing them over, crossing them under, over the top and around the back again. And then in this case, we do our uh, micro pulley. They come to the front. Now there's lots of different variations of the VT, which is Velderton truce. Um, there's also a Machard truce. Um, and we'll need a bit of setting. Once it's set, it's good. Yeah, because I've been using this in a Swabish setup, the hitch has a bit of a memory. It's not wanting to set. And I'm not really loading it with my full weight, obviously, which is uh, meaning it's not going to work quite as well. Hope you're enjoying the background noise of the Tui birds. They're a native bird in New Zealand. They're just, uh, they're just loving it. Anyway, the VT works really well if you want to whiz around the tree. Like I said before, if you are not confident in the tree, you don't want to be climbing on a VT. You want to be climbing on something that suits your confidence level. So if you're finding that your friction hitch is affecting your confidence, then it's probably not the best friction hitch for you in the stage of climbing that you are at. Because you don't want to be constantly worried about your friction hitch. You want to be thinking about what you're doing up the tree and the tasks that you need to be carrying out. You need to be carrying out that pruning, doing the limb walk, feeling confident on that limb walk. And don't choose your friction hitch out of ego. I'm going to do a video soon about ways to be a better tree climber. And uh, one of those ways is, well, spoiler alert, don't have a big ego. There's other hitches that I haven't shown. Uh, that's the kind of the broad range. If you want to really learn knots, there's lots of other videos out there with all of the other knots on them. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you uh, would like to give us a thumbs up, please do so. And... We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Cut.